All right, we're going to continue with the Southside Panthers and Coach Miles Holcomb as Coach Holcomb begins his third season, I believe, as a head coach of the Panthers. Coach, if uh, you'd introduce the players or let them introduce themselves and make some opening comments today, we'd appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I'll let, them, uh, I'll let them introduce themselves real quick. Uh, we'll start down here. <clears throat> Gage Neesmith, I play quarterback. I'm number 10. Totten Rich, I play Mike Linebacker. Uh, number 34. Cade McMichael, wide receiver, number zero. Jake Stewart, 75, play center. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, it's a pretty special group. Uh, these four guys right here, we really got six total um, that probably would have started every game for us since we've been here, but these four guys have started every game since we've been here. Um, the other two, uh, Cole Garrett uh, ended up getting banged up a little bit his freshman year, so he missed a couple games starting. And then Scotty Motes uh, ended up didn't start uh, the Hoax Bluff game that first year. But uh, special group, obviously we have uh, uh, our, our senior classes has been together. They've always been winners, you know, and then we feel like we got a pretty special junior class to follow them up. Um, it's, uh, I, think, I think for me as a head coach, probably one of the most talented groups that I've ever had as a head coach. Uh, and I, the, the, the crazy part is I think this is the most stressed I've ever been going into a season, um, which is, I think, probably counterintuitive to how it usually is supposed to be when you feel like you have a, a good football team. I think, I don't think you're, I didn't really think I was probably going to be this stressed, but I just don't want to, I don't want to let them down. You know, I want to give them every opportunity or the, the maximum amount of opportunities we can to be successful. And uh, because they, that's what they deserve. So it's a great group. Uh, they're fun to coach, fun to be around every day. Uh, I love cutting it up with them. And so uh, I'm excited about, you know, excited about what this group can do. Coach, talk about having returning starters you may have on offense and defense, maybe any newcomers that we uh, will hear about this year. And also I'd like to, to mention – you got a quarterback, pretty good quarterback the last couple of years. That has to be comforting for a coach coming into a new season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the best part, the, the, the best part, especially, I think Gage will tell you, there's, there's um, the ability that we have right now to be able to just have conversations. You know, um, I know, you know, I know seven on seven is seven on seven. Like, it's not real football. I get it. But it's allowed us to be able to grow a little bit. Uh, and the conversations that we're able to have, like through those seven on sevens, especially, you know, as an offense, you know, there's a play early on in the summertime. Um, we're we're at Georgia. Uh, there's a play like we're kind of down. We're, we're playing a, a team out of Georgia, and we're in the huddle. It's the last play of the game, and I just asked them like, "Hey, what do you guys like?" Uh, we were gonna, we were going to run a play, and there's a little tag off the play, and uh, one of our receivers was like, "Well." You know, what if we, like, because I asked them, I was like, do you want to yank it? And they were like, ah, well, uh, maybe. We might if it's there. I remember looking at Gage, and I was like, you like it? You good? I was like, everybody good? And like, everybody was like, yeah, we're good. And so then we run it, and I think Gage thought he was going to yank it, and Jordy didn't yank it. And so then we get done. Like, you can kinda, I can kind of tell, like, Gage is a little frustrated. And, like, we're walking about to play the next game, and he looks, he's, like, kind of looks, and he's like, I mean, can we just call yank if we're going to yank it? And I was like, yeah, man, just use your, like, use your voice, bro. Like, you just tell me. And so then, like, progressing, like, we're – last week we're kind of playing, and we have a play called – we're down in the red zone. And, like, he just comes over and he's like, Coach, I just don't like – I don't like running that in the red zone. Like, I don't like that. Like, I don't, I don't want to run that in the red zone. And I was like, all right, that's – that's, yeah. He's like, if they're going to play it like that, I just don't like it. Can we just do this? I was like, yeah, man, let's, let's do that. Um, so, like, I, I feel like being the third year in allows us to have these type of conversations that we really just hadn't been able to have uh, as, an, as an offense and really as a defense. That's the same thing as a defense, too. You know, it's, it, makes it, fun, it makes it fun. It makes, you, it, makes it, it makes them feel like they have ownership in what we're trying to do. Um, you know, and... and it helps when they're they're pretty talented group that's doing it too. So uh, I think he I think he'd probably be the first one to tell you there's been some growing pains to get to this point, but um, it's pretty fun now that we're here. 
Coach, you're fortunate enough to have two quarterbacks on your team. One on the defense is sitting right to your right, Titan. How special is that guy to have a, legal, a leader, vocal leader in the weight room, in the locker room, defensively like you do in that guy that you know is going to lay it all on the line and also demands, don't ask, his teammates do the same? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a necessity. I, to be as good as you want to be, like you have to have that on both sides of the ball. Um, and the thing that we talked about in the offseason is because sometimes like these guys will kind of chirp at each other like when we get in practice, and it's, it's, which is a good thing to do. Like, I, I, like I'm in for the competition. Uh, but sometimes it starts to get a little bit counterproductive because then it becomes like us versus us as opposed to like we're just trying to get better, we're trying to compete, we're trying to make each other better. Uh, and, and one thing that, that we talked about is like, hey, not only – like I'm, we're, I'm, I'm good with them going at each other. But like, let's do it in a way where, you know, if Gage knows that he's supposed to carry two vertical, like if Titan's the one that's supposed to wall and carry two and he don't do it, then when we hit two, that like, yeah, like let him know, but then be like, hey man, like you got to wall and carry two. Like why aren't you, do, like where were you? And then the same thing that if, like I told Titan, like if, if he knows that all of a sudden, like we got to set the protection to the boundary, but we set it to the field, and Titans free on a rush, like we get there, yeah, like talk it up, but like let him know, like, hey, why didn't you set it to the boundary? You know, and it's one of those things where I think we just kind of build off each other. But to be able to have two guys on both sides of the ball that are not afraid to be vocal, um, not afraid to be held accountable also, because it's easy to be vocal. Uh, and I think, the, I think for the first time it's, you know, we have guys who – have been in the system long enough to where, like, everybody's been held accountable and everybody's held somebody else accountable. Um, and that's, you know, I would like to think that hopefully that'll, that'll help us in our October and November record because right now it's not been very good. So, um, you know, I feel like the, the player leadership that we have this year uh, will allow us to be a little bit better later. Coach, a couple things. Talk about uh, your region. You've got Leeds, Moody, Alexander, and Lincoln. And I don't know what medication you're on your non-region schedule, but you've got Gunnersville, Boaz, Hoax Bluff, and the rivalry game with Edelwall. Talk about how those non-region games, you've scheduled those to kind of prepare you guys for the, the region playoff race. I mean, I, I think, like, if you want to if you want to be good and you want to get ready for the playoffs, like, you've got to play quality football teams. Um our region's tough. There's no doubt about it. I mean, obviously, like you, you, you know, I don't know, I don't know what St. Clair is going to be, you know, any this year. I mean, obviously, they're under new leadership. You know, I, I have a ton of respect for Coach Clements, um, what they're going to do at Springville. Um, but then all the teams that you mentioned, like they're going to be really well coached. They got plenty of talent. Um, and then our non-region schedule, like when you go, anytime you go to Gunnersville and you play, you know, Coach Reese and their team, they're that's a tough place to play. I mean, that's a tough place to play for anybody. So going in there, week zero on the road, I mean, that's a great environment for us to open up in. And then to finish, you know, playing against Coach Glover and Etowal, like that's – look, I've, I've played them four times, and I ain't won yet. Like as a head coach, I have not won a game yet as a head coach against Etowal. You know, I would love to say we're going to change that this year, but we've got a long way till we get to that one. Um, and so right now we're just, trying, we're just trying to get better at what we do. So – uh, today, we're going to install a little bit of 11 personnel on offense. Defensively, we're going to try to, you know, line up to 11, put some coverages in. Um, you know, I feel like that if we can just control the things that we can control day in and day out, uh, that, that this group is focused enough and, you know, we have enough leadership and enough talent uh, and, and enough character that by the time that we get to each game that, you know, the things that we can control, we're going to try to control. All right, Coach, um, you mentioned earlier that your October, November record is not the great. And this question is for, for everybody. Um, what do you guys feel that you need to do to kind of get over that hump and, you know, uh, win those important games in October and November and, and go to the second, maybe third round of the playoffs? I'll, I'll, I'll start and then I'll let them kind of have say what they need to say. I mean, I think right now in the playoffs, I think we're what, like, I don't know, been outscored 124 to 25 in the last two years, something like that. It's not great, I and mean, that's pretty pretty awful. But um, 
I think it comes down to just like I, I wouldn't put the, the blame. Don't go to anybody else like that. I'll take the blame for that. Uh, either either we hadn't prepar prepared them well enough or we've done so much er too early to where like we're just exhausted by the end. Um, I think it's I think, you know, I think I have to be a better I think I have to be better of judging and being able to trust them when they tell me like coach hey, we're like we're, we're wore out and no, understanding like we got to take a little bit off of them by the time we get there um and some of it comes from like you just got to find a way to win one of those games that we just hadn't won like I mean I, you know when you look at it like in the regular season I don't think there's really been a game in the last two years where in the fourth quarter like we hadn't had a chance to be in it like we just got to have a score right here and we just can't find a way to get a score we can't find a way to get a stop and like sometimes like you just need that one like, you just need one time. Like you've got to do it once. You do it once, and then all of a sudden it kind of gets to rolling. And, you know, that also, once again, like, that don't – we tell them all the time, like, there's two people in this – like, there's two groups of people that are in this, you know, in this deal. Like, there's, like there, there's us as coaches, and there's them as players. And, like, there's only one set of those groups that's getting paid to do a job, and it ain't them. So it's our job to kind of figure that part out. And so um, – we have to be better for them. We got to make sure we have better plans going into each game. Um, and I feel like if we can just do that, make sure that we prepare them the way we need to prepare and get them ready to go, that they'll execute the way we need them to execute. But I'll let them answer. Uh, I think one way that we can maintain is being disciplined throughout the season, whether that be in the weight room or on the field or even off the field, whether it be like getting, your, getting eight hours of sleep or recovering. And I think finding ways to uh, find a ways to like enjoy practice every day, like trying to find your ways to get better. And I think just staying disciplined will help us. I think just we gotta take it week by week. Later last season, we had people trying to like, I guess, go on to the next sport, or they're just ready for it to kind of be over with, which kind of sucks to say. But we just gotta be more disciplined, like Titan was saying, and just lock in and further through on throughout the season we got to keep on locking in and just be better and better each week um i think uh the past couple of years we uh we've gotten to where we're getting complacent towards the middle of the season and uh like we'll win we'll win we'll go five and one in the beginning of the season and then we get that halfway point and people are just like ah you know we won a couple games so you know these next couple should be easy and stuff like that but our schedule just gets harder towards the end of the season. So we got to be able to find that competitive drive at the end of the season to push ourselves uh, to in the playoffs. Because those last couple seasons is what the, we play our region games in places that's in our region to play those teams that we play in the playoffs. And and I think that's a, that's a big reason on why we haven't been able to finish is because we get real complacent in the middle of the season. I think the main thing that would get us over that hump is uh, just realizing that we get a chance to be better every day at practice. Like, I know sometimes we'll be going out like, we got to practice today. But uh, in reality, we really get to practice that day. There's a lot of people that wish they could practice. And uh, just realizing that, I think, would get us over the hump. Coach, you're one of the few schools in the state that uh, draws kids from players from both two, uh, two incorporated communities, Southside and Rainbow City. Uh, um, that's unique and how special is that to have two, uh, two communities like that. One on either side of a river uh, melding into the football, uh, well, the whole athletic programs. And, uh, and uh, kind of talk about that. Is that uh, uh, does that ever come up or do you don't try to keep, a, you know, I know it's called Southside, but Rainbow City is also part of the, the, the uh, school. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I've never, you know, when I, when I got there, I didn't, I don't guess I really realized how big of a deal it was. It's probably more of a, it's probably, it's probably bigger of a deal to our peewee community than it is to us. Uh, but um, we had, if you, we, we got a new logo, we got a new S, and like in the middle of the S, I don't know if you can, I don't think it's on anything we have right, right here, but we got a new logo. Um, and like through the S, like, is like, it looks like, kind of signifies like the bridge. Um, and then we put us on a lot of stuff. So just to kind of signify, like, you know, it's both, it's both, you know, and I think for the most part, we try to incorporate both communities, uh, and, and, and we said, like, it was a, there was a big deal. Like, I know, I know Shea, like, got a kick out of it. We said for the cities, like, year one, like, Shea got a big kick out of it, and, like, we, I didn't even, we didn't even realize, like, we had stepped on toes at the time, like, but, uh, you know, 
we, we, were just, we were just trying to do everything we could to incorporate both communities um, because we, we get a ton of support from both of those communities. Uh, we get a ton of kids from both communities. Um, and, in, in, and ultimately, like our middle school is in Rainbow City. You know, our middle school comes, they, they play at our place. Uh, and all of our kids come from over there. We get a, a lot of our coaches live over there, you know. Uh, one of our, our wide receiver coaches is the assistant principal at the middle school, you know. And so being able to have two communities is a, is a neat deal. It's, it's a unique deal um, that, that creates its own separate challenges, but it's also a pretty special type of place too. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Good luck to the Panthers this year. We appreciate you being with us today.